Hey guys, it's Kevin with Truckers Experience. Uh, as you can see, um, well, you probably really can't see. Um, I'm in my truck. Uh, last time I talked to you guys, I was in the hotel uh, waiting for my truck to get fixed. Had a couple uh, studs come off my turbo. Had to get that stuff fixed. Um, it got fixed, came back out on the road, started making a little bit more money. Uh, started running. Had a few slight issues with my cooling system. We ended up replacing a radiator on the truck. I uh, kind of expected for the fact that the truck is 1.66 million miles. Um, it's 2006, so stuff's, you know, expected to go wrong at that distance and that time. Um, but yeah, so did a little bit of work to the truck, got it going, did my services, uh, turned around, swapped out some fuel filters, oil filters, uh, changed my oil and greased everything up, got it, go uh, got it good and going. Uh, then came back on the road and ran some money, um, primarily... As I've said before, I do a lot of uh, coil and a lot of you know steel and skidded product, skidded products and stuff like that uh, for automotive industries. So it's pretty pretty basic and pretty quick on what I do. Um, if you are going to come out and run stuff for automotive, uh, be prepared to set. And it, it's kind of that way with a lot of places that you deal with a high volume of trucks. Um, you know places that or factories, mills, stuff like that. You, you're probably going to set for a little bit. Um, here, I, I don't really mind setting around uh, just because it kind of changes up the pace. You know, you, one minute you're you're working your butt off, and then you know you turn around, you drive for a little bit, and then you get to sit around and you know kind of savor the moment for a little bit, kind of rest and relax, calm down from you know being on the road, and then get right back to it. So. Um, one thing I wanted to bring up was um, I'm starting to see on Facebook on like the news channels and stuff like that people talking about snow on trucks. Uh, with Conestoga, you really don't have to worry about snow and ice building up on the trucks. It you get a little bit, it you know look a little bit of snow and ice uh, every once in a while, but it's nothing too bad. And especially if you're opening and closing your tarp, you know, a couple times a day or even once a day or whatever. Uh, in most cases, you're gonna be able to get most of your snow off, and a lot of times you can actually get it off while the tarp's closed if you. Are good enough with a firm stick or you know something to kind of shake the, the top of the tarp up um if you don't have access to a snow rake and you have you know a, a reefer trailer or a dry van or something like that um try to get the, the most that you can off um i understand it's hard i i had that issue last year and a couple of years or a few years prior to that with ffe um getting caught up in snowstorms and all of a sudden i have snow on the roof of my trailer and guess what how am i gonna get off um on reefer trailers, at least the roof is strong enough to hold you, but in a lot of cases, they're really slippery. So you, if you do happen to be with a company that wants you to get on the roof, be very careful when you're up on the roof, just so you don't slide. Um, some of the dry vans I've seen, I, I don't know if all of them are. I, I know there's a few that I've seen have fiberglass roofs. Uh, you probably don't want to be walking on that stuff. I'm not sure what the, the rating is on them, but I wouldn't trust it. So that's, that's my recommendation. Uh, not getting on one of those but if you can get to where there's one of those snow blades um, a lot of Walmart DCs have them some Del Hayes groups and stuff like that have them uh, ask if you can use it I know in Maine they were kind of picky on who used their equipment so good luck with that um, but try to if you do have snow on your roof try to maintain your speed a little bit slower so as it comes off it comes off smoother i know it's not you know it's not a good situation either way but also at the same time if you know you have snow on your roof try not to allow people to tailgate you or you know get right on top of you especially you know if you know that you're gonna have ice and snow coming off your car it goes the same with you know regular four-wheelers um if you drive you know a car pickup truck suv you have snow on your roof try to take care of most of it if you can um i know some people are short and can't reach the roofs of their vehicles and stuff like that but um, the other day when I was in New York, I witnessed an SUV that turned around and had a huge chunk off, or come off and it busted the window on a, a Peterbilt uh, driving down the road going westbound on 90. Not much that either one of us could do because I couldn't keep up with the SUV to get a plate number. And the other guy, I called him up on the radio. Hey, you good? He said, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to pull off and you know check everything. Probably checking his shorts. I mean, I would be. But, uh. You know, it, it can put people out for a decent amount of time, especially, you know, if you're owner-operator, contractor, driver, or something like that. 
that there's a good chance it could put you down for a few days if you don't have the direct funds or the direct means to get a replacement windshield. Or in some cases, you know, some of these guys drive, you know, 80s trucks. It's it's kind of hard finding glass for, you know, say an 80s Peterbilt or an 80s Kenworth. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, another thing is to go along with that topic and also falls on another topic. Uh, make sure to keep distance around you. And I'm talking front, back, left and right. Uh, if you're at a stoplight, you know, look left and right when the light turns. You never know if there's a semi truck that's speeding, going to blow the light, something like that. This had an accident where a, uh, a sheriff got hit because he didn't look left, which the truck ran the red light and smashed into the cruiser. Um, it could have been prevented, first of all, if the truck stopped, which I completely agree it was the truck's fault. But it also could have been prevented if the sheriff had looked to the left and saw, hey, that truck's not stopping. Uh, the car next to him stopped. So there's, there's really no excuse on any side. Uh, the other thing is um, maintaining where vehicles are. And if you do have a reckless driver that's running around you, and especially if they're going to, you know, if you kind of can guess that they're going to start, you know, messing around with you and brake checking you and stuff like that, either slacking off or if you can speed up enough to kind of stretch yourself away from them. I know a lot of company trucks can't, but if you can stretch yourself away from them a little bit or get mixed into a different group of traffic so that way you know someone else can see hey this guy's driving like an idiot and that way if something does happen then you have witnesses um it saved me a while back ago with ffe when i had a lady driving to the side of my truck um and it could just be you know get on the radio call out a, a car that's you know acting up hey there's a dark green honda or tan honda that's you know driving erratically cutting in and out of traffic, brake checking, you know, vehicles for not letting them, letting them in or letting them go, flashing the high beam, stuff like that. Just let people know. So that way, you know, if, if they come up on someone else, you know, they're not surprised by it. That is if they have a radio on. Um, a lot of people haven't been running radios and things could be prevented if more people ran radios. Um, if something is wrong with their vehicle, you could call it up and same as traffic and weather and, you know, if there's broke down vehicles on the side of the road, you can call it up. Um, for the people that don't have radios or don't use a radio, I really don't I understand some of the situations of why they don't, but there's more benefits than, than downsides in my opinion. That's my opinion. Uh, others have different opinions, but, um, so yeah. Uh, other than that, um, I just downloaded some, uh, video editing software hopefully gonna try to figure it out over the next couple of days i'm gonna try to start mixing in some of my dash cam videos with my actual videos try to make you know mix things up a little bit and make it a little bit better um and if you have any questions just feel free to ask in the comments feel free to uh to message me email me 88 solstice at gmail.com um i can try to answer questions to the best of my ability i'm not the perfect perfect person for every for every question but I do know a lot of people that I can kind of like refer to and get an answer for most situations. So that's about it. Um, I guess I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you guys sometime soon. Exactly when, I don't know. Uh, just happen to be thinking about it this time. So uh, just remember, keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and have a good safe one.